Hello. In this uh, short knowledge clip, hello. In this short knowledge clip, I will introduce to you the case of the North Sea Continental Shelf of the International Court of Justice, and explain uh, the relevance of this case in setting the rules on the effect that the treaty can have in the emergence of customary international law. And so it's about the relationship between, on the one hand, treaties, and on the other hand, customary international law. So this is the uh, basic question that I want to address. Can the existence of a customary rule be derived from a treaty? And if yes, under what conditions? So let's now look at the case. Uh, the case was about the delimitation of the continental shelf in the North Sea, and it was a case between Denmark and the Netherlands on the one hand and Germany on the other hand, and they each proposed different ways to delimit the continental shelf between the states. Uh, on the map, in the PowerPoint, you see different uh, suggestions. So let's look at the suggestion made by Germany first. Basically, the German suggestion is reflected by the dashed line. And by the way, all the solid lines, uh, those are reflecting, reflective of agreements that were made earlier. So the controversy only relates to the dashed line and the dotted line. And the dashed line is uh, reflective of the German position. Germany basically suggested that the court should apply the, uh, should grant to each state a just and equitable share of the continental shelf, which basically means that the court was asked to divide the continental shelf equally, uh, so that each of the states gets an equal share of the pie, so to speak. Uh, so this you, you see reflected in the dashed line. But the Netherlands and Denmark had a different suggestion. Uh, they proposed uh, that the equidistance rule should be applied uh, because they held that under customary international law, the equidistance rule would be determinative of the um, delimitation of a continental shelf. Uh, because the German coast is concave, is hollow, uh, if you apply the equidistance rule, uh, as you see uh, reflected in the map, uh, in the, uh, have a look at the uh, dotted line. Uh, you see that Germany actually gets very little of the continental shelf. So the court was asked uh, which of these two propositions uh, to follow. Um, in support of their claim, Denmark and the Netherlands referred to the treaty, a Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf, that was um, and concluded in uh, 1958, and to which Denmark and the Netherlands were party, but not Germany. And so the treaty could not be applied directly against Germany, because uh, Germany was not a party. It signed the treaty, but never ratified it. So then Denmark and the Netherlands argued that the treaty provision was uh, reflective of customary international law. And so, and as customary international law, it also was binding on Germany. And so the court was asked uh, to establish or to conclude as to whether the Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf uh, reflected customary law and was as such binding on Germany. Uh, the court had some sympathy with the argument that you can uh, refer to a treaty uh, as evidence of a uh, customary norm. And so I'm now going to quote the relevant uh, paragraphs in the court's judgment. So the court said, articles in a convention, uh, like the Convention on the Continental Shelf, can be regarded as reflecting or as crystallizing received or at least emergent rules of customary international law. Even without the passage of any considerable period of time, a very widespread and representative participation in the Convention might suffice of itself to make a provision in the Convention customary, provided it included that of states whose interests were specially affected. But the Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf did not have such uh, widespread uh, participation. Not that many uh, states at the time had uh, ratified it. 
Within the period in question, short though it might be, state practice, including that of states whose interests are especially affected, should have been both extensive and virtually uniform in the sense of the provision invoked. As so states must have complied with the provision, must have acted in conformity with the provision, and this must include not only states party to the convention, because those states would be acting pursuant to their obligation under the convention, but the state practice must also include states that are not party to that convention, because those states uh, especially would be acting uh, under a sense of obligation derived from customary international law. And so to conclude or to summarize, there are three ways in which a treaty can assist in the development or the emergence of a norm of customary international law. First, the treaty can reflect or codify pre-existing custom. Um, in the uh, case of the North Sea continental shelf, that was not uh, uh, the, the issue uh, because the the norm in, art in the article to which Denmark and the Netherlands uh, referred um, was not a reflection of existing customary international law. A treaty can also crystallize emerging rules of custom. And so then maybe the customary norm is not yet established, but it's emerging. It's slowly sort of coming to the surface. And then uh, a treaty can uh, crystallize or solidify that uh, development. And this is what the Netherlands and Denmark argued. A treaty can also generate new custom after its entry into force when accompanied by consistent state practice. So after the entry into force of the Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf, it could be sort of used as an inspiration for the development of a new customary norm. And that is especially the case if uh, states not party to the treaty uh, nonetheless act in conformity with the rule. Uh, so this scenario the court uh, looked at in uh, considerable detail and uh, the court acknowledged that it's possible uh, that a treaty might be creative of a norm of customary international law but only under certain conditions and those conditions you find on this last slide. So a treaty provision can generate new custom mm -hmm but only when the treaty provision is of a norm-creating character. With this, the court meant that it must be of general application. Uh, the drafters of the treaty provision must have intended it to have a norm-creating effect. And so the court looked at the, uh, the travaux préparatoires of the Geneva Convention on the Continental Shelf and uh, concluded that the International Law Commission was not trying to um, uh, to codify existing customary law, but they were actually proposing a new rule. And state practice must be in line with what the provision uh, prescribes. So the state practice after the entry into force of the convention must be in accordance with what the provision uh, prescribes. So if the, those three conditions are met, then it is possible that a, a treaty uh, can assist in the emergence of new customary international law. Thank you for your attention. Let's see.